Welcome to eBuilder University's on-demand video training. If you'd like to learn more about additional training opportunities, please contact your account manager. Now let's jump into Introduction to the Calendar Module Training. Good day everyone, this is Martin Astazarian, Certified eBuilder Trainer, and today we're going to commence a training series on the Calendar Module. The Calendar Module is otherwise known as the Meeting Minutes Module because it's what you use in order to record all of the information gathered during strategic meetings within a project. So the series of trainings is going to be made up of multiple videos. In this first video, we're going to be discussing how to set up an event in the calendar module for the purpose of recording meeting minutes. So before we begin, I'd like to specify the two types of events that you can create in the calendar module. Event type number one would be something called a general event. This is an event that is not tied to a project. It is something that one would set in the system in order to inform the majority of users in the system of something that's happening within the account or something that's happening within the project. The second type of event would be a project specific event. This event is obviously something that's tied directly to a project and what you'll find typically are meetings such as OAC meetings, safety meetings, design review meetings being held. And those are pretty much tied to a project. Now, the main differentiator between the two meeting types, which I will show you very shortly, is that the general event meeting type, you cannot take meeting minutes in eBuilder with. In other words, eBuilder does not record meeting minutes for general events. However, eBuilder does record meeting minutes for project-specific events. So let's begin. When we climb into eBuilder, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the calendar module here at the top. And initially, when you open up the calendar module, it will be in what I typically label as general event mode, meaning that when you're looking at the screen, you will notice that on the right hand side here, it will give me the option of selecting a project within my account. However, if I do not choose a project within my account, I do have the ability to still add an event. So if you're kind of doing the math, kind of realize that this is more like the first example that I gave you in the previous description as a general event, meaning an event that is not tied to a project specifically. So when you click the add event button here on the right hand side, you're going to be presented with fields that I think most people are familiar with if they've ever scheduled anything in a calendar like solution. So the first field that it gives you, believe it or not, is an unrequired field, which will give you another avenue to actually selecting a project if you desire to do so. But if you do desire to just make a general event, you would ignore this because you are not making a project specific event in this case. Moving down, we're going to go into the subject field. Now, anybody who's created a meeting invite of any kind has always had a subject field, which I interpret to be the headline of the meeting. So in essence, remember, eBuilder is about reporting. So if anybody wants to research all the meetings that are out there and they want to do a keyword search based on what someone potentially put in the subject line, that would be the value of putting something here in this field. The next fields are very, very common in any kind of a meeting tool that you may have used in the past. The first is you're declaring whether this is an all day event. By clicking this, the eBuilder system will automatically know to put a block in that entire day for this specific event. If you do not choose this, then you will be able to choose a starting date and time and an ending date and time. After that, you will have the ability to program frequency within this event. So if the event is going to happen one time, obviously you're going to make this choice. But if let's say the event is going to happen at a specific frequency as required by the organization, you can actually create daily, weekly and monthly events. The field here below is for location, and this is where you would specify the location where the meeting is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in the other invite type, which is the project specific invite. I'm going to show you an example of a drop down menu that can be incorporated here, where if there are specific locations that you will always be having your meetings, it will give you the option of selecting from a drop down list. But that will be in the next meeting that we schedule the next video. Down here we have the agenda and this is something that I like to talk about because this is one of the first opportunities most users get to see something called a rich text box. Okay, this is a technical term that I want everybody to become familiar with. A rich text box is just like any other text box except it does have these formatting tools at the top. Right, which most of us are familiar with. Now, the one icon that I always show here is this little monitor like icon, which you can see says toggle full screen mode. So when you click it, you have the ability of creating a nice 
formatted agenda that you can either freehand here directly on the screen or you will have the ability to copy and paste this from Microsoft Word if this is something you already have set up in another system. If you toggle the monitor back, it will bring you back to the invite screen and you can proceed with the next fields. If you scroll down, you're going to have more familiar fields. The second one is going to be a reminder. So would you like to be reminded within five minutes or up to two days? It depends on what range it is. Now we're going to get into a field that's very common to eBuilder users, not necessarily in other solutions. The concept of privacy. So there's two choices here. You have the ability to either organize a private meeting or a public meeting. Now the difference is, is that if you organize a public meeting, despite you were invited or not, the meeting shows up on the calendar. So it allows you to basically let people see any meeting that's taking place, whether they've been invited or not to the meeting. A private event, you can imagine, will only show itself to the people that have been invited. Right. So it's a pretty easy concept to understand, but I want to make sure everybody's clear. Now, when you get into a project specific meeting, which we're going to get into momentarily, this has a slight different connotation as well. Just one more layer of restriction, which we'll discuss when we get to that point. The next here is required attendees. I think anybody that has ever set up a meeting can understand what this means. You do have two options here. You can either freehand the email address of the person you wish to invite. I'm going to put here my personal email address or by clicking look up, you can actually click on this filter and you can pull contacts from your contacts module. Okay, so this is something I've covered many times before, but uh, to make this an easier process, you can filter directly from your contacts and you can filter between users that are in the system or just show contacts only, people that are outside of the system. The next is the same functionality, except this is for optional attendees, and this is mainly for reporting purposes. You're identifying who's optional and who's required. And last but not least is priority. So here we have three flavors. We have low, normal, and high. This actually serves a purpose for reporting. So if anybody wanted to report across the system and say how many high priority meetings do we have right now, they can easily extract that information. Now, below these uh, very simple fields, you're going to have this very e-builder experience that I like to call down here where you can actually attach reference documents. So the first concept that's showing here with no example is called the custom field. And I've spoken about custom fields in the past where a custom field can be added to almost any module so that it can start recording information that is otherwise not offered by e-builder out of the box. This is actually one of the uh, highlights of the e-builder system. It lets you customize it very quickly in order to capture good information. So if let's say your organization wanted to capture something other than the fields that we just filled out in addition to those fields, an administrator can actually create a field here to record a piece of information. Whatever information that is, it all depends on you know what your needs are, but it is available to you. The Documents tab connects you with the Documents module, and basically what it's designed to do is in the event that this meeting has some sort of an attachment or a prerequisite document that needs to be read or reviewed by all the invitees, if you will, it can be provided here through the invitation and attached just like any other solution would. The next two tabs have to do with both of our workflow management modules. And if there's any kind of an instance like an RFI or a change order approval process or anything like that, that we typically have an e-builder, you can attach that as well as referential documentation. And then the attached viewpoints are related to our BIM feature. So if you're currently not using business information modeling, it's kind of an irrelevant tab to uh, review. But if let's say you want to attach a viewpoint from your BIM model and relate it to the topic of discussion at this meeting, you can. So again, the tabs down here basically refer to anything that you want to attach to the invite as reference. The people you're inviting can use it as reference and kind of get a better understanding of what the meeting is going to be about. Now what I like to do is I like to move into actually creating a meeting invite for a specific project. So I went back to the original screen that we were on and I'm in the calendar module, but now I'm going to actually select a specific project here on the right hand side. And when I go into my project, one of the things that confuses most people is that the screen almost looks identical to what we saw in the general events. But the key indicator here is going to be this title that says this is the calendar for this specific project. Most of the steps to create an event here are almost the same, except there's a couple of differentiators because of the fact that for a project specific event, you do have the ability to record meeting minutes. Let's explore that. So I'm going to click add event here for this specific project. 
and for the most part the screen looks kind of the same as we saw before. Now obviously the project that I selected is selected automatically here, but if let's say I change my mind and I want to go to another project as opposed to exiting this screen and choosing the project, I can do it on the fly right here with this drop down menu. As we move into the additional fields, we're going to re-encounter the subject, which again I told you would be the headline field for your meeting, in other words what the main idea of the meeting is. And then we're in unfamiliar territory once again, which is the meeting type. So the meeting type is presented only on project specific meetings because again, this is where you are recording actual notes as you gather and you want to record and report on. So what you're doing with meeting type is you're basically categorizing the meeting. Now the value with this is that as you categorize the meeting, and let's hypothetically say I choose design review, what the system will do is it will automatically number that meeting type. Now, not a big deal, right? Number one, the first design review meeting for this specific project. However, if let's say we have multiple design review meetings, which I know most projects do, the system will allow you to do is, is manage all the nodes and categorize them by the number of the meeting they were in. So for instance, if let's say there was an issue we were discussing related to a hallway, and we initially brought that up in a design review meeting number one, and there was some sort of an action item or something that someone had to do, when we have design review meeting number two, we can actually reference what was discussed in design review meeting number one and keep tabs and accountability as to the progress and the completion of any action items that were recorded in that meeting. That's something I'm gonna show you in the next video when we actually go through actually recording meeting minutes. But I want you to see the value up front and understand the importance of selecting the appropriate meeting type here for reporting purposes. The next couple fields we saw uh, before, which is the all day event, we saw date and time, start and finish. We also saw the frequency selection here and the location. Prior to that, I also showed you the agenda and the ability to toggle the rich text box here in and out so that you can actually make a nice formatted agenda for your meeting. We had the reminder setting, which is anywhere from five minutes to two days. And now we're back at the privacy setting that we discussed before. Now I did mention there's another layer of restriction here that one has to consider. So I'll restate what these settings are for. So if I were to make this project related meeting public, it would be made available for the people that are assigned to the project whether or not they are invited or not to be able to see the meeting. So for instance, in eBuilder, when you are logging in, you are assigned to specific projects within the program. And so that is the first kind of right of admission here when you're actually exposed to public project related meetings. You have to be part of the project. Everything else will flow exactly the way that it did for general events. As long as you are part of the project, whether or not you're invited, you'll be able to see the public event. The private event, same rules apply. If you are part of the project and you are specifically invited to the project, then you'll be able to see the event and no one else will be able to see the event on the calendar. So again, the same rules apply. It's just when we talk about project, we have to add that layer to make sure you guys understand. The next two fields we saw again before, it's required attendees, optional attendees. I showed you how you could manually enter in the email address of the attendees. They do not have to be licensed users. I just want to make that clear. And you can click the look up button here and grab someone from the contacts module if that's a better way for you to do it. Now this third field we didn't see before and it says attendees who can manage the meeting minutes. So basically what eBuilder is doing here is that it's calling out the specific person that's going to be managing all the notes. For the meeting. So for instance, in your organization, you may have a person who does this all the time, or you may have to call that out ahead of time and make sure that that person takes on the responsibility of adding meeting minutes. And again, in the next video, we're going to show you how that's done. But what we're doing here is we're calling the person out that's going to be doing this. Now, you can put multiple people here, but it would probably be more advisable to control how many people you have doing this, because obviously, if let's say eBuilder wasn't around and you guys were recording meeting minutes, you you would potentially designate one person to record these meeting minutes or organize them for the group before they are physically published and made official record. This is something that you have to make a decision on as an organization, but typically I only choose one person here that's responsible. The next field is going to be priority, and again, the same flavors, low, normal, and high. Again, very good for reporting in the event that I want to report across my project in this case. I want to see how many high priority meetings I have, how many low priority meetings, and how many normal level priority meetings I have. Very few are low in our industry. So if you're kind of chuckling at that, I can appreciate that because almost everything is either normal or high in construction. 
And then below, you're going to have the tabs where you can attach reference documentation. This is something I reviewed with you just a couple minutes ago where I can create custom fields to record information that is not provided out of the box. And I can also record documentation that's associated to the meeting and any kind of a workflow management instance, as well as viewpoints from a business information model that we are hosting in eBuilder. So once you're done and you make all these selections, the meeting will be actually saved in the calendar. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually take down the minutes and activate the meeting, basically publish all the notes and make them official record. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about additional training opportunities, please contact your account manager.